Welcome to the Honest Recruiter Podcast, powered by MRL Consulting Group, the no-filter podcast about working in the recruitment industry. Hear about real-life consultants and business owners talking about everything recruitment, leaving out zero detail. If you already work in recruitment or are thinking about working in recruitment, sit back and enjoy the ride. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the seventh Honest Recruiter Podcast. I know, seven, it feels like we've done like three, but actually seven is a quite a nice round number. Soon 10, then 15, 20, and 100. We should have some kind of celebration when we get to 100. Maybe we'll do a party, a networking honest recruiter network party. So today we have got Harley Lawrence. He is back in the spotlight, and Harley is our manager consultant here at MRL. Now today's podcast is slightly different as... We want to talk about toxic environments in recruitment. Why does it happen? Why do they exist? Is it down to certain individuals? And why in some businesses there are quite a lot of like backstabbing kind of tendencies, not just in recruitment, but actually in sales. But this is purely focusing about why these kind of happen. So Harley, welcome back to the podcast. If people are listening and they're like, who's Harley? Why don't you give a little bit of a flavour of who you are? Uh, right, well, thank you for having me back. I mean, that does mean that I can't have done as terrible a job as I thought I may have done the first time round, so thanks very much, Billy. Um, so I joined MRL six or seven years ago now as a rookie consultant with no previous recruitment experience, have kind of done relatively well, worked my way up, and now manage a team of 360 recruiters uh, here in our head office in Hove. So some would say, as Drake says, started from the bottom, now we're here. (laughs) I guess so. I guess you could say that. (laughs) Brilliant. So in all seriousness, again, these podcasts are really about working in recruitment, um, tips and advice of working in the industry, um, and kind of all things recruitment. So like I said, today is really about looking at toxic environments in recruitment. So... Harley, to get kind of straight into it, we always hear horror stories when people come in for interviews. That's kind of where this kind of come from because yeah. we interview people all the time. Every mm. week we have people coming in for interviews, be it back office, be it contract, be it perm, be it finance. But purely from a consultant's perspective, we do hear those horror stories of kind of way shops are run. And this podcast is not for us to slander other recruitment companies or talk down on other agencies. It's just to talk about why do toxic environments really do, why do they exist in recruitment? So why do you think quite a big grenade to throw in the room? (laughs) My God. Um, Firstly, I would say you are a product of your environment, Mm. okay? And I, you know, I very much believe that, you know, if you are in a toxic recruitment environment, it will affect you. It will affect how you operate. It will affect how you work. And so if you do find yourself in a toxic environment or you think, oh, you know, that's a bit shit. I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. Get out of it. Go. You know, if, if you're really in that bad of an environment, you will assimilate to your your surroundings. If you don't want to be that, don't stay in it. OK, I would say one or a couple of the reasons that it happens is look you can earn decent amounts of money in recruitment um i think one of the reasons why there is backstabbing or you know somewhat toxic environments is because sometimes people think well i can go and find the candidate myself i can go and do this myself or i can just nick the deal off the bloke next to me yeah you know and that that is horrible you know that is really really shitty um, but how do you nick a deal off someone? Because surely you're there going, right, I've, you've, I've got this job, so I need to find... Or is it going, I know that Bob's looking for this engineer. I could just find... I know who he's, he's talking to, Sandra. Yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah, actually yeah. just going to find it. Unfortunately, the that does happen. Now, I would say we are relatively fortunate here in the fact that that can't happen because of the way that the business is set up. I mean, it'll take far too long to go through it. But basically, that is impossible here. Okay. However, there are many, many other recruitment companies and, you know, I've interviewed so, so many people and spoken to them about reasons why they want to leave and motivations for moving and all this kind of stuff. And a lot of it comes down to just really crappy and toxic working environments where, you know, you are or people are stealing deals off of other people. People are, you know, kind of gaming the system like it just 
pretty crap practice in general. Um, and I think that is, firstly, it is down to the responsibility of management. Yeah. Okay. When when you see uh, an organization with a toxic culture, the blame lays squarely on the shoulders of the person at the top of that organization. Okay. And if they don't know about it, well, then they probably aren't doing their job properly. In in my opinion. Okay. Um, so you know there is there is that. But then it's it's kind of it's accentuated by the people who are participating in that on a daily basis. Um, and unfortunately, that can be you know, like I said stealing deals you know just generally not being very nice uh, as well to other people why do you think that happens is it because is it down to that individual of their is it their personality trait or is it just their their mindset at work so the people that are being that toxic is because they're unhappy there and it's kind of the way that it's kind of the system's made them to be like that potentially potentially yeah i think as well um recruitment Although as simple as it sounds, you know, find a CV, send it across, cash the check. Um, <laughs> easy. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. It's not really that easy, but it's quite a competitive environment or relative, very competitive, I would say. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes it's easier to make the other person look bad than it is to be better than them. Yeah. You know, and so there's quite a lot of there can anyway be quite a lot of backstabbing and kind of negative stuff going on because it's a bit easier, isn't it? Nick the deal off the person next to you and do it yourself rather than, you know, go out, make some business, you know, do the deal, find the candidate, run the process, etc. Um I think like you said, it sounds so alien because the structure here, like that physically couldn't happen like the guy yeah. next to you, there's no way that will I can't just- do it. The way it's set up here, yeah. is that's it wouldn't it wouldn't work. What would happen is they would put the deal through and it would go on your numbers. <laughs> yeah. So great if someone wants to do that. I mean, feel free, yeah. but it just so doesn't how work. So do how do you not get dragged into situations like that at work? So let's say you are at a place where you are, let's say, not performing that great, mm-hmm. but there's people around you who are, you know, deep down that actually you could be performing a lot better than you already are. How do you kind of get out of that circle without kind of I guess it's pissing people off at work. I mean, I think you're never going to get away from it completely because you're working at the business, so you're associated to it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can just get your head down and get on with it. Don't speak to people. But then it ends up with a relatively lonely existence working in a business like that where you can't talk to anyone for for fear of backstabbing or being backstabbed. Which you know no what one I mean? really like, wants. Well, no one wants that, yeah. yeah. So that's why I said like right at the beginning, if you do find yourself in that kind of a situation, get out of it. You don't need to suffer that. Yeah. You know, that's not what all recruitment businesses are like. Unfortunately, it's what a lot of them are like, but it's not what all of them are like. And you can get yourself out of that. Um, alternatively, if you really cannot leave that business for whatever reason, um, just get your head down and don't involve yourself in it. You know, it's it sounds kind of, kind of, you know, playground, doesn't it? A bit, a bit, bit preschool, but it's, uh, you know, just don't get involved and you'll be all right. Like, <sighs> yeah, no, completely. I think I did a bit of research on this to find kind of there's so many like hr surveys mm. not just in recruitment but just in general about working in kind of toxic environments and it said here that 29 percent of this of this survey was done by 1500 people in mm-hmm. brighton brighton in britain and it <laughs> says 29 percent said that someone at their workplace makes their life a living hell Whoa. 29 percent. that's quite strong yeah i mean that might be their boss Okay, so, <laughs> so let's talk about that. Then. Yeah. So people could say being in a toxic environment, it could be down to their boss. So mm-hmm. how do you kind of, being someone that does manage people, how do you kind of manage that work relationship where it's not like toxic between you and, because it's the whole business yeah. and colleagues I think, I think and friends. You've got to be, I think you've got to be careful because we're very fortunate here in the, a number of, uh, a number of the consultants, you know, we are all very friendly with each other. Yeah. But there has to be, uh, you know... A, There's a balance. A, a balance okay. and a difference Divide. between yeah, a yeah. mate and a manager. Um, and I think, you know, very honestly, that's not easy. That is that is difficult. Especially when, you know, you want to... It gets to a Thursday or a Friday and you do want to go and, you know, have a couple of drinks in the pub and do this, that and the other. And then actually you have to come back in on a Monday morning and say, mm, that wasn't really good enough, you yeah. know. Why haven't you done X, Y, and Z? Um, and I think that's tricky. Um, but I think, very honestly as well, you mentioned, it's very interesting, you mentioned that thing about a living hell. You know, that is so strong. Yeah. That is like, I don't think you can get much worse than a living hell. 
Um, and I think that probably is tied back to the fact that there is a very low bar, low bar to entry for recruitment. There are a lot of people who come into it, realise it's not for them and then leave. Mm. And I would like to know of that 29%, how many are of those people who are in the industry for like less than two years or less than yeah, a year yeah. or something like that. Because you can go and do any job any job in the world if it is not the right job for you you don't enjoy it or you're no good at it you're creeping towards that more living hell kind of area mm. um and if you've then got a, an, a manager which is particularly harsh on you or hard well yeah it wouldn't surprise me if you did start thinking that life was pretty shit and a bit of a living hell in that sense so i i get that it's horrible to hear it um and i always you know i always feel really sorry for people when i interview them and they clearly just aren't enjoying where they are at the moment um because it's you know you spend most of your life either in bed or at work <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like so you, you know yeah. get a good job and a good mattress and you'll be fine yes. you're sorted um so what do you th- are there the same things that come up from people that say i'm unhappy here because of x or yeah there's there's there is there is a lot you get a lot of the time I hear they've changed the commission scheme. Yeah. That's that's a big one. But I don't get why you'd do it. If your business is in such a poor state that you've got to make the commission worse for the, you know, for the consultants, then the issue is probably not something that you're gonna fix by doing that. And it's, that comes you know, back down to having a toxic environment because making like nobody likes change. No. Even if it's from changing a desk to somewhere mm. else. Mm. The study's saying that actually that causes so much friction yeah. from desk moves. But even from like a commission structure, then people are moaning, they're talking at lunch, they and that could be make the environment even more toxic. Yeah. So Oh, they said it was good, you know, maybe yeah. you know, oh that I don't like them anymore because they said it was a good idea and they helped push this commission structure through. La 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 la. Yeah. Like it's not cool. Just you know Work out your commission structure. If, you, if you're a business leader, work out your commission structure, set it as it is, and then try and improve it. Don't go the other way. If you're going the other way, there's there's problems, really. You know, business problems, not your consultant. Well, it's probably driven by your consultants not performing, but, you know. If you were, if they were all making two, three, four hundred grand a year, you wouldn't be changing their commission structure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's probably other issues which you should change in that sense. Commission structure's one. That's always a big one. That comes up more often than than I would have first expected, if I'm honest. But is that um, down to the industry, I think, because it's a, you know, people get into criminal to earn money. Yeah, of course so it is. It's going to be probably the it's main It's a big thing. one. It's a big driver. Yeah. Um, another one is, you know, just, oh, I was promised X, Y, and Z and wasn't delivered. A promotion, you know, a team, uh, more responsibility, the ability to run a, a certain market or do a certain thing. Um that, that can create a relatively toxic working environment because it kind of turns people against each other, especially if somebody else got it instead of you. You know, um, it can breed a not-so-nice environment. Yeah. Um, other ones that you hear, I mean, you do hear all sorts of things, but a lot of it is, you know, like lack of um, lack of kind of flexibility or lack of, you know, certain things. Support. Support. Kind of Support's stuff. a massive one. Yeah. You know, m- like most people you know when you first come into recruitment you know nothing you yeah. know really nothing about recruitment and you know you, you, you're like a you're like a toddler you know you need to be taught how to read and write and you know do all the yeah, all the yeah. absolute basics to just function um but that can also it it all kind of leads back to having that toxic environment because yeah. if you have new people that come in or even experienced people come in and they've learned recruitment the bodged way, yeah, and then you come in and actually you don't you don't learn any more mm. in a new place. Mm. You're then just kind of there learning from people that don't really know how to do it properly and just learn the way that they've always known it. So then yeah. you're in an environment where you're a bit unsure what you're doing. So then people start talking and it's all just toxic and it's a bit bitchy and gossipy, and it all and it comes down to those core kind of roots of what it is. Mm. It's it, it's not great, and I you know I. Like I said, I just feel sorry for anybody who is working in that environment. I promise you there is something better out there. Go find it. Like, so let's say, okay, scenario one. Let's say you're working with someone you love working there. It's yeah. brilliant. You love working there. However, there's a few people who are the toxic people. Mm-hmm. How do you kind of keep it professional? They could be more senior than you. But you can see that it's actually toxic. But you aren't in a relationship to go speak to Billy the boss. 
how do you kind of keep it professional but kind of stay out of that toxic thing it's difficult um it is not easy by any means and i'm not going to sit here and say that it is easy because i know that it, it definitely isn't but cover your back okay so if you're in in an environment where somebody can pinch a deal from you you know do x y and z cover your back okay if you feel like there are certain people who are particularly snaky or whatever don't speak to them don't ask for their advice yeah. don't you know don't involve them in your business because chances are if they're that way inclined they probably will you know pinch it or you know do whatever um secondly like it might sound a bit crazy but kind of kill them with kindness yeah. you know yeah like that is don't try and play them at their own game they've probably got more experience than this than, than you at this and they're probably better at it so don't do that but kill them with kindness you know buddy up i would buddy up next to them don't necessarily talk to them about work but speak to them you know maybe try and convert them a little bit make them realize that you know uh there is more than one way to be you don't actually have to be like that it could be good um so let's say you've got power struggles with a boss because that's that's very yeah it no matter what industry it is when you have struggles with your boss and it's that you're nutching heads all the time how do you deal with that? Because, mm-hmm. you know, on one hand, you've got your boss who you look up to, um, or you might look up, you might not look up to them, and it, it's <laughs> just like you're a bit of a dick, but you're my boss, yeah. and you you might be thinking, I'm better than you, or in a couple of years' time, mm. I want that seat. I've mm. been there. I, I've absolutely been there yeah, yeah. in the eight years doing marketing. I've been there, mm. and it's there's that struggle between them. How 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 do you get around that? I would recommend play the game. All you've got to do is outshine them and outclass them, Mm. okay? Don't concentrate on trying to screw them. Don't concentrate on trying to prove them wrong or catch them out. Concentrate on your work and be better than them, Mm. yeah? Because they're going to spend loads of their time trying to catch people out and trying to do all this kind of stuff which isn't actually conducive to either a good working environment or their success or your success. So while they're busying themselves doing that, get your head down, work. Yeah, outshine them, and and then you know you'll you'll quite quickly, that will quite quickly get recognised, and you will quite quickly get the position which you need yeah. or deserve. And it probably won't get recognised by that person. Yeah, it'll be others that yeah, go. Yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, actually, I think also they're a bit more grown up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I think also being organised and being, if you are a bit sloppy or you're not very good at filling out the CRM or. Oh. which everyone isn't let's be honest <laughs> most sales people kind of it's like they're allergic to it sometimes yeah. it's funny Ooh, for that data oh god but like doing that or keeping your data somewhere which you know is not if you are in an environment where yeah. someone can steal deals don't leave data sheets of candidates yeah, on around on the, t- the table or yeah. even if it's a new computer on a spreadsheet which yeah. anyone can do it keep yeah. it in your emails or be really yeah, organized. I mean, it seems such a shame to even have to think like that. But if you do find yourself in that environment, like, yeah, just cover your back. Yeah, you know, don't leave your computers unlocked. Like, it, it's just silly stuff, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, you do hear of all sorts of things, and and unfortunately, that is the reality for some people. But yeah, don't make it easy for people. No. Yeah, make it really, really difficult for them. Yeah. So uh, you know, there's. You, you, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but just, just make it hard for them if they're going to do that. Do you that. think sometimes it comes down to a, I guess this is in, in anything, just a, a breakdown in communication? Yeah, potentially. Like I've worked in some places where you used to have kind of Monday meetings, team meetings, management meetings, Friday meetings, and it got to a stage where it was a meeting for a meeting. Yeah, like you, meet, everyone, you meet about the meeting. Yeah, yeah. so like you don't need that. So they cut, we cold it, and then you kind of like... Mm, I think we need meetings again. Yeah, like, there's no communication. Nobody knows what's going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. sometimes that could be a, a big thing. Like, mm. well, you didn't say this. You didn't mm. tell me this. And it's like, well, if you would have told me this, I would have known that I need to do that. Yeah. So if you are on the other end of it, I, a bit of advice I'd say is ask those questions. If you don't, if you're unsure of anything, and it, and you think that could be a reason why it's a bit toxic, over ask on questions because yeah. then you've got all that information. Absolutely. You need. And you shouldn't really be, you know. You shouldn't really be told off for asking questions. That's that's crazy. If you're in that environment, well, that's you've got more problems than it being toxic, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, breakdown of communication can be. I wouldn't necessarily say it would create a toxic environment, just an inefficient one. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's probably other things you can be doing uh, 
But I get it, no, it's not a direct cause. But things like without having meetings in place, it's then people start gossiping. Yeah, and are talking about. Oh, this things. is going on. Oh, that's going on. And yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, the toxicity. Yeah, can, yeah no, I know. Can I get start that. from that side. That. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, it can. Um, absolutely. So obviously, your background before here was mm-hmm. kind of more sales based yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So big, big kind mm-hmm. of corporate businesses. Yeah. Ha- I guess you must see from that side as well, kind of the whole backstabbing environment. Oh yeah, absolutely. We um, it was like a kind of telesales, cold calling telesales kind of environment, um, and <clears throat> you you were meant to, for example, if you were on the phone, you spoke to someone they asked you to call them back. You were meant to put a call back into the system, yep. but so many people would just write it down on a piece of paper or a board and put it next to their desk. And then there would literally be people who would go around to other desks and just pick up the boards and nick someone else's sales. It's mental. And that is like, you're going to, you know, you see people doing it and you're like, like what are you doing? He's your <laughs> mate. You went for a, you went for a fag with him earlier yeah. and you had a chat with him and now you're nicking his sale. Like what's going on? Mm. Um, so yeah, that, you know, it does happen, but I think it, I don't even think it's just recruitment. I think it happens in a lot of sales environments. I I agree. Um, and I think, like I said at the beginning, I'll reiterate it is the responsibility of the management to ensure that it doesn't happen or can't happen. And if it does happen, set it right. You know, don't reward the people who are doing the backstabbing. What kind of a culture is that? Yeah. Well, I mean, actually, if you're another recruitment company, keep doing it because you'll destroy yourselves and that's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, when I was talking about finding the results from that survey, and yeah, some of the things we're saying, one here is great, like 13% of people that wrote about the study said that um, they fought with teammates as they were going for similar positions. So things like they both want to be a manager. So that's where it could be toxic. Yeah, I mean, it team, could be. You and your other members of staff. But think about it. Outshine them. Yeah. Outstrip them. Yeah. Beat them fair and square. If you win and you win because you stabbed the other person in the back, <laughs> yeah. you haven't won. No. You know, you really haven't. Okay, let them stab you in the back. They're, you know, they're going to be the ones who look like an ass to the rest of the office or the rest, you know, they're not going to have the following um, from, from everyone else if they, you know, if they do do that. So, yeah. I mean, just don't get, try not to get involved in it. I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but... You don't have to. No, of course you don't. There's no. It's not in your job spec. Your job description. You must get involved in backstabbing. You yeah. know, there's no need for it. So. I think as well, it could look at any kind of situation where, and it, I think again, it's difficult here because we don't have this in place. But things yeah. like when you have like HR in place, you know, it's that mm. confidentiality where you are going to them to speak mm-hmm. about stuff which you don't want to get leaked uh-huh. to the office. And there's so many times where it then. Is spoken about. Is then leaked into the office. In the exact manager thing, meetings yeah. or board level stuff, which which no one wants, and I think that could be a struggle mm. as well. Yeah, it can be. Um, I mean, it's horrible to think that you know some people, if they are feeling like bullied or backstabbed or whatever, don't have a place to go somewhere to to speak about it and, yeah. and try and get it sorted. Um, unfortunately, that that may be the case in some other businesses out there. I don't know, but. You know, I, it's just it's just not a great environment to be in, I guess, for, for everyone. And you want to avoid that as, as much as possible. But like you mentioned, you know, if it are you are underperforming, yeah, there is a tendency to feel like you are being bullied, or mm. because you're underperforming, yeah. So, how do you kind of how do you tackle that? Because is that kind of a you need to look in the mirror a bit and go right, okay, I am underperforming, so I'm not being bullied. They're just actually telling me what I need to do and because I know that I just don't like hearing it yeah so unfortunately a lot of the time like for for example when you do start recruitment you know nothing you know and it's okay to know nothing um, but you know if you're uh, a few years in and and you know the same thing's happening and you're just not really performing like there are there are many reasons why of course but take it on board and go what can I do better you know, what could I have done better there? Have they got a point? Uh, okay, you know, people are people as well. People are emotional. Sometimes, you know, your manager might give you a bollocking. They might have had a bad day. Yeah, You exactly. know, it's not personal. Um, and very honestly, n- people generally aren't that horrible. You know, people, we're not, we're not horrible people in, in, in general. Um, so if something does come across that you think is really bad or really negative or whatever, ask yourself, 
would they have meant it like that? You know, how are they normally? Um, are they normally like that with me? You know, that kind of thing. And I think it can like spiral out of control with you kind of go back on communication and things like that. Their lack of communication or poor communication can allow things to escalate to a point where there is backstabbing because there's yeah. just, you know, five miscommunications in a row. And that's it. You hate each other. Well, actually, no, you, no. you don't. Like, yeah. like it was just that miscommunication. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. One element. Yeah, exactly. That uh, that then made somebody else think something else, and la la la. You know, just don't. I, I would say don't take everything to heart. You yeah. know, I, I very very few things would be a attack on someone's character. But I think a lot of that is you learn. You you learn how to deal with that. Yeah. I think when you're even just new to work, if you're a graduate and you are starting new at work, like someone telling you your work isn't good enough. Yeah. Or, you know, that's a big thing to kind of, yeah. for the first time to go, what, you mean my work's really shit? It's like, well, hold on. No. I wouldn't say that. No. But I, from experience, when I first come into business, I was a bit late. I was like 25 when I first got into doing real work. Yeah. Like, proper work. Proper work. <laughs> like, when people say this isn't good enough, I used mm. to take it so personally yeah where i'd then switch off and be really annoyed and i'd had to it was it took me a couple of years to really work that and again it's working in the real world isn't it the moment the moment you take it personally you are not going to improve yeah yeah don't take it don't you know don't take it personally like but like you said everyone's human everyone is human yeah and you know if you do hear oh that was crap you know Okay, that's probably not the best way to deliver yeah. some feedback. Great feedback. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, don't don't you don't need to take it personally, yeah? If somebody's saying that was a crap call, that doesn't mean you're shit. That just <laughs> means you can do better than that. Yeah. And if anything, actually, that's a good thing. Because it's them saying, I know that you are better than that. Mm. Yeah. If you did a crap call and they told you it was a crap call, and well, they wouldn't tell you it was a crap call if they didn't think you could do better. Yeah? Like if they thought that you were a, a lost cause, they probably won't tell you. And it becomes toxic when they don't tell you, but then actually they've told probably somebody else, yeah. which is could be another senior team member. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. where it can become a bit backstabby. Or... Yeah. And that's not good. I mean, you know, if you're a, if, 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 I guess if you're a manager looking at that, then just be open and honest with people about feedback. Don't speak to other people about, about them. Mm. Um, it's, it's just not good practice really, is it? So how have we created like a non-toxic environment here? Because like you said, everything we're talking about, it's stuff we it's don't do. It's kind of alien, isn't it? You know? It really is. And you know, people are going, oh, of course they're going to say that. Yeah. But, well, hmm. yeah. People <laughs> Come and have a look. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, no, nothing to hide there. So um, how have we created that? I mean, for example, there's things like um, account ownership. So you, you, you own an account within a region. So nobody else can place into it without, you know, without it going on your figures. Yeah. So it just completely de-incentivizes doing that. Um, and it gives people certain ownership and responsibility. It's fantastic as well because it means you are responsible for that. Yeah. And if you do miss something in that, it is your fault. Yeah, you know? and you, it's up to you. It's your, yeah, it's like it's your destiny to yeah. kind of build that out or, or exactly. not do that. Exactly, exactly. Um, the other thing as well is just nip it in the bud. Like we just don't suffer that. Yeah, we've interviewed a number of people over the years who would have come in and probably made good money. Um, and you know, I'll hold my hand up and say, well, actually, we didn't hire them because we thought they were dicks. Yeah, you know, and we, we didn't think that they would fit our company culture. Yeah. We didn't feel that they would, you know, they would actually add something to the business we've got here. Um, and so it's the characteristics of a yeah, person, isn't it? You, you hire for personality, really, don't you? You have to. Yeah. Um, and if you hire personality traits that aren't in line with a positive working environment, well, you're not likely to end up with one. Yeah. You know. Um, so I think there's, you know, there's that as well. And we just, like, like I said, nipping it in the bud, when you do hear things and everybody's human, everybody has a bad day, people snap, people, you know, do X, Y, and Z, but nip it in the bud when it happens. Like, don't wait for it and, oh, I'll wait. If it's not a problem yet, it's not a problem yet. Because by, by no time you'll have a problem. Um, and then it's very, very difficult to kind of backtrack from that. I think as well, from seeing it from a... I guess for me, from an outsider, mm. from a operational perspective, yeah, yeah, the communication the consultants have is 
from what I've seen, is it on another level. Yeah. Like the every day we have a meeting about the CVs or candidates that have come in. Yeah. So actually, that's a huge like that's so minor, but you're communicating every day for an hour about mm-hmm. what's come in. Is this yours? Do you want it? Do you that's want it? That's what Do I mean. It? it. There's like no candidate ownership here either, which is unusual for some recruitment companies a lot of them have you know a stack of cvs in my top drawer and they're my best <laughs> candidates and like the whole thing what's the point in that yeah. they're not going to place them you know unless you're an absolute superstar placing 10 15 piece people a month which is unlikely you're not going to place all those people no. and there might actually be somebody else here who could place them in a job that they'd be better at or they would be happier within um and so with that in mind it kind of makes sense for the candidates as well because they're they're then being represented for the broadest range of opportunities that they can within the business. Um, by various consultants. By various different consultants. And, you know, without somebody then going, oh, well, they're mine, so I'm not going to share them with everything else. I mean, this meeting, every office has it at the same time every day and at the same time as each other as yeah. well. So it's not like, oh, you know, Hove is on an advantage to Dresden or, you know, Dresden gets it before Sophia or something like that. We've all got it at the same time. Yeah. Um, and very honestly, I mean... I picked up a job earlier, started working something, said to one of the guys on the desk, oh, I need some some of these guys based in um, in Germany. And he went, yeah, all right, no problem. Within about a minute, he'd sent me 10 names to my my inbox. And he's like, they're all on Adapt. Go and have a look. Yeah. So you, you go, oh, okay. But it sound, you saying that to some people will be, but you that someone's given you 10 names of like, yeah, but they were sat there and he wasn't doing anything with them, you know? Like, they were candidates that he had brought in previously that weren't quite right for other positions. If he helps me make that placement, then we'll go on a better kickoff, sales kickoff meeting next year, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's helping it's the that. great, it's the greater it's good, like, isn't yeah. it? Of course it's it is. The team. It's not it's, looking out for you. It's, no. It's a collective. And it's kind of that, um, it sounds slightly strange and a bit, you know, airy-fairy, but the kind of pay it forward mentality as well. Mm. Um, when you start, you get so much help, or probably too much, if I'm honest. Um, but <laughs> you, you know, because you just you can get you, almost dogpiled with people going, "Yeah, I'll help you." Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. this is what you need to do. This is what you need to, to be do. fair. I did a video a couple of weeks ago of um, two new starters here, yeah. and the first thing they said, one of them said, was. It is a bit overwhelming the support because you're yeah. just not used to having yeah. this many people just on hand when you want yeah. them. But you know what it means is that okay, when you were new, you got loads of support, you got loads of help. You know, it sat there and arguably, you know, somebody else should probably be getting rewarded for for some of the stuff, especially if you know the absolute newbies. If you're going through some stuff with them, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, for example, Terry or myself, we would literally be kind of running the search with them and say, right, they are good because of X, Y, and Z. Call them, speak to them. You yeah. know, we're almost doing the recruitment for them. It's kind of like the training wheels. It's isn't hand it? holding know? to a degree, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. it's like you're right. free. Yeah, you know, you know, get on with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so th- th- there is that, but then it just means that when you're a year in, six months in, whatever then you're going to, when there's a new person, you're going to do the same thing because it happened for you. And I don't know, it just, I think it just creates a much more kind of collegiate, oh, team-based uh, environment. And I think that's really, really helps with, with culture. And yeah, the one thing I've definitely stuff. noticed here is it's not you're out just to feed yourself. And some places that's you get thing. that. And, you know, if you are just that solo recruiter who yeah. you've got, these are my contacts and I'm th- and you're a... A delivery consultant coming yeah. into a business, and you have got Bob, who, who he's just feeding you stuff. But yeah. these are his babies. I kind of get that because if that's the structure of the business, mm. but here it's it just isn't like that because we're here to collaborate. We all want to be world class, mm. even more so than we already are. So mm-hmm. actually, it's how do we get to that? How do we make the person sitting either side of me, yeah, even more world? The thing is, you're only as strong as the weakest link, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So let's make everyone better. And then we can all we will all be better as a team. Yeah, we will all be better as a business. It actually reminds me. I was speaking to uh, a colleague, and they'd been here for about a year and a half. Good amount of um, at the time they'd been here for about a year and a half. Good amount of recruitment experience beforehand. And we were on a night out, a couple of drinks or whatever. And they said, you know, I've noticed like no one backstabs here. No one, you know, people aren't out to get you. And I'm, I'm just, I was like, <laughs> what? 
yeah, obviously. What like what would be the point in that? You know, and actually, when you when you then look at people and they are from a really really backstabbing y horrible environment, you're like, why? Just leave. Go and do something else. Like, for, you don't need it. Yeah. Um, no, but the thing is, if you fail, nobody else wins. Yeah. If you win, your colleagues win as well. And so that is like, that's the overwhelming message. And I think that's how it should be. It's mm-hmm. all well and good to sit here. I'm not sitting here on, you know, ivory tower, golden throne, whatever. But that should be like that. If you're going to pit your colleagues, you know, pit your team members and colleagues against each other, it's going to be horrible. Recruitment's difficult enough with enough ups and downs anyway. You don't need to make it more difficult with a crappy environment. Mm. Like, it, it just makes sense. Well, Harley, that was a lovely phrase <laughs> to leave Thanks. and finish today's podcast. Um, yeah, as we said, you know, the environment here is very different. It's collaborative. Mm-hmm. We work together. We work to win. And we are aiming for the same thing. And that's not just here in Hove. That's here in our office in Tristan and our office in Sofia in France as well. Yeah. So, Harley, thank you very much. Have you enjoyed today? I have actually. Good. It's quite like reflective, <laughs> isn't it? Because you you know, you kind of think about all the all the people that you've interviewed and like the, you know, the, the situations that they found themselves in and yeah, for you sure. know, a lot of them are my colleagues now, so so it's really positive and I hope they're enjoying it more than <laughs> yeah. they were previously, but um yeah, no, thank you for having me. Really uh really appreciate it. Well, you'll hear Harley no. probably not on the 8th or no, the they'll be bored of me by then. A bit later. But Harley will be back on our podcast giving some tips and advice for working in recruitment. But that is it for today's podcast. We really hope you all enjoyed listening. Make sure to listen to all our platforms. So on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, whatever you call it, Google Podcasts. SoundCloud, YouTube. SoundCloud, Bebo, MySpace. <laughs> it's probably everywhere. But Get comment. Web. Yeah, make sure to comment, share it with your friends. If you know people that work in recruitment, give them a link. We're on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram, and we're on Facebook. So be sure to tune in soon, and we'll see you very soon for our next podcast. Cheers, Thanks, Harley. Billy. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Honest Recruiter podcast. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and even subscribe. Keep your ears peeled for the next episode.